With movie theaters still closed due to the COVID-19 pandemic and no theatrical releases to review, I've certainly made up for lost time by tuning in to new streaming shows. And it's been fun because I've simply shifted gears and gone into many of these shows as if I'm seeing a movie premiere, like a, a 10 hour movie premiere sometimes. So not only am I going to share with you the six brand new shows that I've watched, but I'm going to quickly review them and let you know which ones are definitely worth your time because there's no time like the present to binge a good show right now. And the six shows that I'm going to be quickly going through and reviewing are Defending Jacob, The Great, Hollywood, Mrs. America, Space Force, and Upload. And I'm going to start my reviews with my least favorite and work my way up to my most favorite. So let's get started. And at the bottom of my list is Space Force, which you can watch on Netflix. I honestly can't believe how disappointing this show actually is. Given that it's literally from the same creator that brought us The Office and Parks and Recreation and reteaming with Steve Carell as the show's main lead, there is no excuse for how bad this show actually is. And the only thing that this show has going for it is the cast itself and a relatively higher budget with decent production value since it is a Netflix show. But sadly, I don't really have anything positive to say about this show. It egregiously wastes its all-star talent, including Steve Carell, and don't even get me started on the horrendous misuse of Lisa Kudrow, but the jokes are incredibly lazy, uninspired, and almost feel like amateur slapstick comedy that had me rolling my eyes constantly in every episode that I watched. And it only took two episodes for me until I started to just whip out my phone and scroll on social media because that's how badly this show kept my attention. It's bad enough that the vast majority of the jokes are simply unfunny, but they are also scarce. And it's almost insulting how unintelligent the humor of this show really is. The story is all over the place and there isn't one plot point I actually grew to care about. The dynamic between Steve Carell and John Malkovich's characters are about the only part of the show that isn't bad and actually seemed promising, but ultimately it still falls flat, just like the rest of the story, just like the writing and the comedy of the show. There are a handful of semi-funny moments, but I'm pretty sure you've already seen them in the trailer. And if you're a hopeful like me that watched the first episode and hopes it gets better, I'm sorry to say that it just doesn't. The production value of the show is decent and the cast itself is quite prestigious, but those sadly don't matter because ultimately the entire show gets lost in space. I'm going to give Space Force a D. The next show on my list is Hollywood, which you can also watch on Netflix. Now this is another show created by Ryan Murphy and I was thoroughly invested in the story for about the first five episodes. Most of the characters were well-developed, the dialogue was quick and juicy, the costumes and sets were beautiful and lush, and it was fun to immerse myself into a sort of fantasy version of Hollywood in the 1950s era. The writing is in top form for uh, about the first five episodes, and the standout performances uh, for me were played by Joe Montello, Dylan McDermott, and Patti Lapone. But with how promising and strong this show started, and with how well it kept me engaged for the first five episodes, and there are seven episodes total, the last two episodes dramatically fell apart for me. It's almost like the writer's deadline for completing the show was escalated and they just had to wrap things up super quick. And it was not only jarring how plot elements resolved themselves, but it was also sloppy. There were character developments that are almost completely disregarded, issues that are easily solved with a perfect bow. And the show tried way too hard to give every single plot element a fairy tale like ending for almost every single character where it honestly had me rolling my eyes. Not that I don't like a happy ending, but I like it when it's naturally earned without feeling forced. Also, I do take qualm with how blatantly it disregarded Hollywood history in that era. I know that it was intending to be like a fairy tale, but it simply wasn't executed in a creative or clever way. For the first five episodes, I'd probably give the show an A-, minus, but the last couple episodes completely changed my overall experience, I'm sorry to say. 
I'm going to give Hollywood a C+. The next show on my list is Upload, which you can watch on Amazon Prime. Now, with how much I greatly disliked Space Force, which is co-written by Greg Daniels, he was also the writer for this show called Upload, which was a surprising delight. The biggest thing this show has going for it is its creative and completely original premise, the setting and the world building. The way this show showcases technology in the not too distant future is incredibly captivating and innovative, not to mention that the mystery element to the overall plot helped keep the show moving steadily along and hooked me. And almost all the actors do a great job within their roles, and there are some genuinely sweet character developments that pulled me in. Sure, this show isn't quite as funny as it could have been, and some of the acting is a little cheesy, but the effects aren't always top-notch, and not all of the jokes land quite as well as they should have. But the pros definitely outweigh the cons, and the story itself did a great job at pulling me in and getting me fully on board to see where this show actually goes in the future. I'm going to give Upload a B. The next show on my list is Defending Jacob, which you can watch on Apple TV+. Plus. Now, about 90% of this show was incredibly gripping from week to week. I love drama, mystery, thrillers like this show with A-list talent, especially when done so well with such strong performances. I found this show almost as gripping as HBO's Big Little Lies from a week to week basis with the uh, unraveling mystery behind this crime. Now, they're definitely very different stories, but the evolving tension and mystery elements and wanting to know what happened continued to keep me on the edge of my seat with Defending Jacob. I thought the writing overall was strong and the performances were powerful. The standout for me personally was definitely Michelle Dockery, who differentiated herself from Lady Mary and Downton Abbey just beautifully. And I argue she gives possibly the best performance of her career thus far. With all that being said, I am sorry to say that the last 15 to 20 minutes of the very last episode is where it definitely bummed me out. You always hope such a strong show with consistent week-to-week -week episodes can ultimately stick the landing. But in Defending Jacob's case, it sadly missed the mark. There are blatant changes to the ending of the book that make no sense to me why they changed it, since the ending of the book would have been satisfying. But sadly, the show went a different route and only left me with questions. I didn't get the resolution that I think we all deserved as an audience, and it was very bleak. And with how the book actually ends, there's no reason for them to have changed the ending to the end product that we got. Unless maybe their argument is that they want to make a season two, which isn't even a guarantee. Still, this show was about 90% fantastic and had me engulfed in this story. And if the show had stuck the landing, I'd, I would have given this show an A. But given how it fumbled, at the finish line, I'm ultimately going to give Defending Jacob a B plus. The next show on my list is The Great, which you can watch on Hulu. Now this show is a period piece telling about the rise of Catherine the Great in 18th century Russia, and it did a seamless job at blending 21st century comedy and dialogue in a way I've never seen done quite at this level. This show is unabashedly graphic, seamless and absolutely hysterical. Elle Fanning gives hands down the best performance of her career where she officially graduated from young teenage starlet into a prestigious leading lady, at least to me. The writing is sharp, the costumes and cinematography are impeccable, and the surprises are constant. This show is definitely not for the faint of heart and could definitely rub some people the wrong way with how much it blatantly doesn't give two fucks. And I enjoyed every bit of it, and I can't wait for season two. This show does not boast to be a picture-perfect historical adaptation, so if you are easily offended by history being altered for the sake of the story, then this is definitely not the show for you. Like I said, this show does not hold back from sex, language, violence, perversion, and the humor can be incredibly dark and not for the faint of heart. There were a couple moments that made me cringe, but I don't think the show was unnecessarily foul. It definitely served the story and breathed new life into what could have been another generic 
period melodrama. But this show was spicy and undeniably juicy as hell. Even if it may have crossed a few subtle lines here and there, it definitely hooked me nonetheless. And I'm going to give The Great an A-. And finally, in my top spot, we have Mrs. America, which you can also watch on Hulu. I can't praise this show enough. And it all starts with its all-star cast. And I can guarantee that the majority of the actress categories for limited series and upcoming award seasons will be flooded with the names from Mrs. America. Every single performance was superb and brought so much to this overall story, and there was no weak link among them. My personal favorite was Kate Blanchett, who did the impossible task by playing such a politically flawed woman in such a way that made me despise what she was uh, standing for and promoting, while also intoxicating me with her performance that made me want to see more of her. It's like the kind of character you equally despise and admire, and she killed it. Other standouts for me were played by Sarah Paulson, Uzo Aduba, and Rose Byrne. Everyone completely transformed themselves into the historic women they were tasked to represent. Each episode was engaging, electric, and the pacing never slowed down. I was engulfed and I was personally floored and along for the ride and journey that these amazing women take me on. And it's also such a powerful show that showcases historical women in such beautiful and empowering ways that I'm ashamed to never have known nearly as much about until seeing this show. This is a show that everyone needs to see where I guarantee you will learn something about the power and struggle of the Equal Rights Amendment in the 1970s that you may not have known or realized and it brought me to tears in the end. This show was meticulous and intoxicating with Oscar-level performances, and I hope more and more people will watch it. I literally have no qualms with this show. What I will say is that this show has a tendency to devote specific episodes to specific characters, and so there are a few actors in the show that don't get nearly as much screen time as some of you would like. And if you're not into TV dramas based on historical times in our recent U.S. history, maybe it'll take a bit more convincing for you to check this out. But this show boasts such powerful messages. Some might argue that are even more relevant today than ever, and I argue that the performances alone are worth giving this show a fair chance. Not to mention that the production value is through the roof, and there is not one episode where this show lost steam. I can't praise Mrs. America enough, and that's why I give it an A+. And there's my final breakdown of six shows that I have watched during this pandemic and which ones that definitely stood out to me. I'm curious to know what you're watching and I'm curious to know if you've seen any of these shows and which one is your favorite. So feel free to leave your thoughts and opinions down below. And as always, thank you all again for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Ryan Bamey signing off. Bye everyone.